Hello, welcome back to another tutorial. I've been doing these animations recently that have uh, people asking for tutorials, so let's give a quick look see. Um, here's one. Let me move this out of the way, sorry. Uh, it's basically taking an OBJ into Stardust and emitting particles, um, which are getting color over life, and we're using the emit by sequence to get this kind of um, effect. Uh, this is so patchy looking because this was a 3D scan, so the uh, UVs are kind of all over the place and the way that it was textured. And since I didn't rebuild, the UVs uh, gives this really patchy look, but I kind of like that. Uh, here is another example. If I close this. No, that's not going to close. Another example, which I have open in the back, is this head scan. And this is a uh, model with clean UVs. So the way that it is scanning, oops, sorry about that, instead of being all patchwork is kind of uh, in the arrangement of the UVs. So it's going from her front to back is how I have the uh, sequence animated on. And it gives a more kind of clean, actual scan looking to the aesthetic. So. This is pretty straightforward, um, and then there's a couple of things that I've added for customization and variation. So let's jump into the scene real quick. Again, VLC is not interested in quitting. So here we have it. This is our project. Let's make this a little bigger. Of course, it's going to do whatever it wants. Okay. so. Now that we have that, uh, I have three emitters because I wanted to emit in different ways for the uh, customization that I was talking about. Each have their own uh, particle type just because I wanted to have variation on the color, size, and uh, the life. I have a turbulence giving it a bit of a warble, and I have two fields which are driving the size of the particles. Um, based on two textures that I made, which are just simple fractal noises. And those are, that's it. That's our setup, right? Easy peasy. Let's um, look at, let's isolate some of these just so we can kind of look at it. So let's select this and hit solo and hit solo up here. Now we have just that. Oh, well, I guess we're going to want our transform too. So if we look at this without the uh, field affecting the size, you can see that this one is uh, emitting uh, per our object, emitting sequence, and it's emitting uh, 100,000 per second. That's our object, and our emit type is uh, face outline. I'm lying to you. It's surface, tricky, tricky. And um, and our surface density is set to uniform instead of default. And that gives us this kind of, um, based on the mesh density, uh, it's given us a uniform across the entire surface instead of by default, which uses kind of like where there's higher quality or tighter faces or vertices it gives you more detail but this uh, i was already getting a lot of detail from my other so i knew that i would just need a generic uh, surface so that's what this is and then if we turn on the size you can see how that fractal is being applied across the surface using the uvs since we have good uvs on this model and it is affecting the size so if we go to the settings on here we can see that it is a map and the map is set to layer. Our source is one of the fractals, the current time, sample quality high. It's affecting the size and it's projected over the UVs and it's affecting uh, applying access over X, Y. And the size uh, is set to 100. And so that if I set this to like 200, you can see that it makes it bigger. If I set it to smaller, our max size is limited to that. 
So our white values are going to be a max value of 100 and our black values are zero. So that is what that looks like. So let's unsolo these and solo this one with my very descriptive uh, naming up here, just head two, head three. Uh, head three is our face outline. So this is drawing, uh, putting points along all of our face edges. And the sample here is set to 10. Uh, you can change this to uh, get a higher or lower uh, amount of detail. So let's say if I set this to one, uh, we have much uh, less points across those edges, which then gives us a more uh, generic look than a wireframe look. And if we increase the density to say, let's say 20, you're going to get much tighter uh, application across each of the face edges and it's going to increase the look of a wireframe. So if we scrub through this, um, this is a 4K comp. I built this at 32 bit, but I've dropped down to 16 just for speed and I'm looking at it as third quality. Um, like we can do a demo in HD, but uh, this actually is pretty fast for the resolution and with depth of field. Uh, in the latest build, they have made the points or circle, I should say, shape for particles uh, and increased in speed, and it is really fast to work with. So I'm going to drop this back down to third, just a quick preview. Um, I guess while we're doing that, I should note that uh, looking at things at full quality with depth of field is pretty important to the overall final look. So when you're dialing in your depth of field, you definitely want to be at full quality. As you can see, when I shift down to third that it uh, does not look the same of course um, so either way that is why our edge subdivide is important uh, the other thing to note is that the higher in density that you're getting as you're emitting you're gonna need to do more particles per second to uh, achieve a fast across the surface look so as you can see setting this to 20 our animation you know, to get across the entire mesh takes probably about 300 frames. And let's say if I set this to 10, you can see that it gets there much faster in about 150, which is about half the amount of frames. So just keep that in mind when you're playing with those values that uh, for this specific type of uh, build, you're gonna want to consider uh, what amount and density that you are using. Uh, if we dive into the particles real quick, we can just see, I didn't look at the other one. These are really short life since I'm emitting so many. And I've given them a lot of randomization in their life so that some live longer. And if we look at their color over life, their color gradient starts with a cyan in the top left, top left and the left. And then it goes to kind of a big blue, then a darker blue down to purples and then black, and we have these set to add. So once they get down to these lower values, if we click on this, you can see that they are much uh, lower in their value so that we get them much more knocked back, which is our kind of fade look. And if I jump back over here real quick, you can see that these particles, since they were being more generic across the surface, were living longer still with a uh, randomization of 55% and their color over life. I copied and pasted the same gradient. Uh, and so these are not being affected by the field because I wanted them to be uniform across their uh, animation. So let's turn these off and let's look at our last ones. Our last ones are over here. If I hit solo on this you'll see that this is also a sequence. This is 10,000. Uh, it is set to have a little bit of speed over life. They uh, start at zero, not moving, and then they kind of move to 100% midway through their life. This is about 45% through their life. And then it kind of tapers down towards the end netting back to zero. So if we watch these, they kind of are born on the surface and then you can kind of see that they move away 
a little bit over their life. And secondly, we were adding a turbulence. So if I turn this on, you'll see that they're moving away even more because this is also set to kind of not affect them until past halfway, you know, in that kind of 45 range again. And then it spikes up and then drops off. And so this is pushing them 250 degrees uh, based on the axis, x-axis, and 250 pixels is how much we're moving them. And so if we watch this again, we can see they're, they're born on the surface. In the beginning, you can see there's no uh, position movement. And then as they are dying, getting to, towards the end of their life, they move away. And then the field is set to make them shrink over their life. So if we go, this is another fractal. It is not using the color of life. It's your size, UV, XY, same, same, same. And this is also just giving a randomness to their uh, size. It is not directly affecting their size over life. Uh, we could do that through the size over life on the particle if you wanted these to uh, tie down over age instead of, since I have them so randomized, they uh, I feel like they didn't need that. So I specifically didn't do that, but that is another option you could use. Uh, same thing here, color gradient. We copied the same color gradient and they're set to add. They're set to a life of one second and randomness of 55 and um yeah so that is the three uh portions of this that give it its look so and then the last thing that we've done if i go up here and turn off solo the last thing i've done is added a volumetric light which is new in the latest build it's right here at the bottom it uh looks at any uh light source in your scene and I have a spotlight sitting at the bottom to kind of give like a projection aesthetic and it creates volume light based on that. And there's a lot of different parameters in there to play with. So you can get uh, some of this kind of break up and you can play with like the hot spot, which is like right near in front of the light, how bright it gets, the fall off. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot to play with and there's also a phase which I'm animating to give it the shimmer um, but yeah, that's the overall approach. So just to kind of quickly do that in a practical setting, let's create an HD comp. We'll just call this uh, a test. We'll create it from scratch. We'll create a solid. We'll call it SD for Stardust. We're going to apply Stardust to that layer and we get our basic particles. We're going to create a camera just to have a camera. And we're going to turn depth of field off because we're not going to worry about that. We're going to go to the emitter. And again, we're looking to do this from an object. So we're going to go to object. And we'll go grab that specific one, which is in my 3D OBJ human um, head female. Yeah, that's probably it. And if we set the speed to zero on these, and if we scale this lady up, let's say, wow, she's really small. Let's center her. Wow, she is so small. That's okay. We'll just make her bigger, right? So there we can see that our particles are emitting on this object, uh, face outline, and they're just disappearing. So let's go ahead and set up our particle real quick. We'll set these to be a short life. We'll set them to 0.5. Particles, the size that we're at, I can switch this to full. The size that we're at needs to probably be smaller because of how many we're gonna emit. So let's do two. And let's do oh, color over life, color gradient. Let's just grab a preset. Uh, 
this looks interesting has a high brightness over here and then falls off to a darker color let's just adjust that a little bit see the values all the way up that's great and let's maybe make these drop off in value as I get down here and then let's set that to screen or add either and then let us increase our amount of particles to maybe 10,000 and we're starting to get something that looks somewhat interesting now let the thing that is happening is let me rotate my camera a little bit oh she's facing backwards so let's flip her in her z right now that i've moved the camera You can see the particles are being born all over randomly and then going through their colors and then dying. Great. Now let's switch this to sequence. And you'll see that since we have it set to face outline, again, we're going to get that quality of uh, it's going through her hair and everything, how her UVs are set up. So she's getting a bit of a detailed look. This is a different head than the one I was using. That's what's going on. You can tell how these UVs were laid out that this wasn't a very uh, set up for this, but it works, right? Let's just play that. See that it's going through each patch and then animate it off. So again, we could play with the subdivision amount here. So if we did uh, five, maybe we could get a faster look it's kind of interesting and maybe if we increase our particles to a hundred thousand maybe we take our some divisions up you know, so this goes back to, you know, the balance of the amount of particles that you're putting along the edges and the amount that you're uh, creating per frame per second. And striking that balance is, you know, find the best approach. So that's about it. Um, hopefully that is a good explanation of what's going on under the hood on this. And you can set it up and do some interesting animations. Uh, this is obviously just the tip of the iceberg. There's a million other things, that, variables that you could add in. Uh, if your character does have uh, good UVs, you could bring in that texture and apply it through fields and you can uh, have better control over your fractals by knowing exactly where, say you had the face and you only wanted to affect the face, you could you know, go in there and draw a mask or shape to go down the face and trace outlines or whatever you want to do you have more control over it uh, there's definitely a lot of uh, flexibility to have in this this is the most basic setup but um, it's fun it's fun to play with and it's fun to throw in three different 3d models and, and see how they react um, hope you enjoyed it and uh, thanks for watching